Good day, and welcome to worship at Brookfield Congregational United Church of Christ. We're glad that you could join us today for our worship. We begin with our organ prelude. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather to worship the one who is often called the great I am. We are followers of the God in whom we live and move and have our being. We come together to recognize the life, movement, and worth of the God who is with and for each and all of us. Come, let us worship. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of our hearts, we know that we do not see clearly with our eyes, nor do we hear clearly with our ears. 
what we feel with our skin may not guide us as well as we would have hoped, and that which we smell or taste may bring us pleasure or disgust. But you are in, around, and through us in miraculous ways that offer us a chance to know your endless love for us. Help us to experience your love and share it with all creation. Amen. And now the prayer of confession and words of affirmation. Loving God, we confess we are afraid of what we do not understand. We cause great harm when we choose to ignore someone because they do not act, look, or think the way we do. We are afraid of the unknown only when we forget that God is always with us. The Lord is our shepherd. We will fear nothing. We will live as though forgiveness is for everyone. We confess we do not act in ways that show God's love for everyone. We create hierarchies and let our unconscious biases guide our decisions. We will know we are loved as we seek to love others. We will live as though forgiveness is for everyone. Our story for this morning is entitled, Now I See, and based on the lectionary scripture for today, John 9, 1 through 41. One day, when the disciples and Jesus were out for a walk, they saw a man who had been blind for his whole life. The disciples asked Jesus, Rabbi, why is this man born blind? Was it because he sinned? Or did his parents sin instead? For the disciples, there were only two choices. But as usual, Jesus could see more than the obvious answers. He told them he did not sin. His parents didn't sin either. This man was born blind to reveal the glory of God. Jesus spat on the dirt and made some mud he spread the mud on the blind man's eyes and told him, Go, wash yourself in the pool of Shiloh. The man did, and when he came back, he was able to see. The man was happy, but the people around him were confused and unsettled. The man's neighbors asked, This man can see? But the man we know has been a blind beggar his whole life. When the man insisted he was the same person, they asked, How were your eyes opened? He told them, Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and told me to go and wash in the pool. When I did that, I was able to see. The neighbors were still skeptical, so they brought the man before the Pharisees. When he told them what Jesus had done, some of the Pharisees were amazed. But other Pharisees said, This man is not from God, or he would have not been breaking the law by healing people on the Sabbath. Then they called the man's parents and asked them, Is this your son? Was he born blind? If he was, how can he now see? The parents said, This is our son, all right, but as for the rest, we don't know how this happened. Ask him yourself and see what he says. The Pharisees called the man a second time and asked if he thought Jesus was a sinner. He said, I do not know whether this man is a sinner. I know only one thing. I was blind, and now I see. I don't know where Jesus comes from, but what I do know is that it doesn't matter. He opened my eyes, 
If he didn't come from God, he would not be able to do things like this. At this, the Pharisees grew angry and threw him out. But Jesus went to look for the man. He asked, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man said, tell me who that is. And Jesus answered, the one you have seen and the one who is speaking to you right now. The man said, I believe. Jesus said, I have come into the world to give sight to the blind and to take away sight from those who think they see everything. When the Pharisees wondered if they were blind, Jesus answered, if you were blind, you would not have sin. It is only because you think you can see everything that your sin is still with you. Good morning to everyone. This morning we are going to do a familiar and comforting Amazing Grace. And I invite you at home to sing along if you wish. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Yeah. 
Today's scripture is from John chapter 9, verses 35 through 41. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. Here ends the reading. May we have ears to hear. This is weird. Let's begin by acknowledging that this is a strange time. There was no course in seminary for pastoring in a pandemic. So we're all doing our best. One thing that the leadership team of this church is sure of is that our communications will be positive and hopeful. We will do our best to continue to be the church in this strange time. One thing that kept coming to my mind as I thought about this message was 9-11. I remember dropping my kids off at daycare and going to church and listening to the unfolding news on the radio and realizing that the world would never be the same. Then, as now, there was no road map for what to do or how to respond. And when I sat to write the message for that Sunday, I looked at the order of worship that had already been planned a month before, and I realized that I didn't need to change a thing. The scripture was perfect, the liturgy fit. God does work in mysterious ways indeed. And the world is different, but we are still here. We are still worshiping, and God is still speaking. In the same way, we have prepared for this Lenten season months ago. Little did we know that our plan for beautiful emptiness would turn out to be so literal, that I would be preaching to an empty sanctuary. Yet Lent is meant to be a fallow season of hunkering down, of doing some deep spiritual work. So too, our scripture story for this morning works well for what we're going through. Jesus heals a man born blind and offers a lesson in what it means to be blind and to see. And the story offers us lots of interesting opportunities to delve in. First, there is a communal understanding of disease in Jesus' time that's slightly different from our own. While we do not understand disease in exactly the same way that the man's blindness is due to sin, his or his parents, there is so much misunderstanding, misinformation, and panic around the COVID-19 pandemic. The best thing we can do is to be calm, to check our sources, and to support one another, even remotely. Times like these remind us of how much we need our community. And you all have been sharing wonderful stories of hope and support and concern that you've experienced and witnessed. While there are many stories in the media about hoarding necessary supplies, 
selling them at outrageous prices to those who need them. There are also stories of neighbors helping neighbors. While there are troubling statistics about things like guns and ammunition being sold out, there is also peaceful response of love and compassion. We want to be part of the community that receives the news of healing and hope. As the blind man was received back into his community, and so we're doing what we can. Some of our church families are at home making cards for our elderly members who cannot get out or receive visitors. Our staff is ready with volunteers who want to drop off food or needed items to those who cannot get out or should not go out. And we're checking in with each other and sharing encouragement and resources. Second, when Jesus is questioned about the reason for the man's blindness, his or his parents' sin, Jesus says that the man was born blind to reveal the glory of God. While that seems like Jesus may be saying that the man's blindness is God's doing, it is rather that that blindness offers an opportunity for God's grace and glory to be revealed through his healing. God is in this pandemic, too, not as the source, but as a solution. Trying times give us an opportunity to rely more on God's grace, as well as to reveal that grace through our response. This is an opportunity to bring hope, to support, to love, to pray, and to heal. It begins with each one of us and how we choose to use this time. We have a chance to do some deep spiritual work. We have a chance to reach out in compassion to others. And we have time to pray. Finally, the Pharisees cannot see the healing power of Jesus or celebrate this healing with the blind man because it doesn't fit with their understanding of how things are supposed to work. They're, they are more concerned that Jesus is healing on the Sabbath than in the fact that Jesus can heal. And when they get caught up in the potential sin of Jesus healing on the Sabbath, the man says, rightfully so, I don't care. All I know is I was blind, and now I see. That is our focus now. Not the means, but the healing. We are challenged in this time to do things very differently than we have done them before. The good news is that it is working and that we're able to connect and share and be together as a community of faith even if it's in a very different way. This is not how we thought Lent would go. But maybe that's a good thing. We have an opportunity to bring hope to one another. We have a chance to be part of the healing. We can reveal the glory and grace of God even in the midst of this trying time. Look, I can be a gloom and doomer. That is my tendency. But in all honesty, having to shift focus to healing and hope has made me even more confident in God and in our community. This is going to be a struggle, no doubt. But we will get through it. And we will emerge with new priorities, like the blind man. We can see only the bad news, the fear, the panic, or we can have our eyes opened to God's presence with us in this. Our curriculum offers this idea. There is a philosophy derived from the Naguni Bantu people called Ubuntu, 
Roughly translated, it means I am because we are. The spirit of this idea is that we share a common humanity. And according to this each idea, each individual depends on the community as a whole to understand the fullness of what it means to be human. No time in our journey has this been more true. We are connected globally in this struggle. We are finding new ways to connect with one another, to support one another, and we rely on each other to stay healthy and to be well and to feel supported. We are indeed all in this together. And so we pray for healing, for hope, and for connection for all the world. Amen. I want to begin our prayer time with a poem shared with me by one of our members from her sister's community in Vermont. It's entitled Pandemic by Lynn Ungar. What if you thought of it as the Jews considered the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny that now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart 
reach out your words, reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, as long as we all shall live. We take a moment now in silence to lift our prayers to God. Holy God, our list is long, a litany of needs that you know well. We pray for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for whom this distance is more than they can bear. We pray for those whose health is at risk, we pray for the medical personnel, the first responders, and the staff who are taking care of the ill. We pray for those who stock shelves and make food and sell the things we need, and those who are still going to work. We pray for those who are away from family. We pray for those who are worried and afraid. Loving God, your son Jesus offered a similar litany of blessings, calling blessed all those in the struggle. Remind us that we are blessed, that we are not alone, and that you are with us, God, bringing hope and healing. All this we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we depart, carry stories of courageous sheep and shepherd boys, sight for the blind, and soil for seedlings that were ignored or neglected. Carry with you the hope that we will see with our hearts and know that God is good.